Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? How are you? Good to see everybody today. Welcome this morning. How are you? It is a good day. It's a good day. Snowy here. Very nice. Very nice and snowy. Uh, it is fully winter, which is uh, kind of a gift uh, to see the beauty of the snow and to be in the midst of it all. Uh, the particularly wet snow this morning, too, so it's it's heavy and laying out, so it's really quite something. How are you, everyone? Good morning to you. Good morning to you. I hope you are well. Hello, hello. So good to see everybody. Waiting for folks to come by. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello, hello. How are you? I hope you are well. Hey, good morning, Sharon. Glad you're here. Deb, hello, hello. Good to see you this morning. Glad you're, I hope you're well. Everything's good. It's a good day. It's a beautiful day. Good morning, everybody. Hello, hello. On this Wednesday, it's a very exciting Wednesday. Good morning, good morning. are you everyone how are you hey good morning donna oh good lots of snow all right good morning irene glad you're here good to see you uh, that uh yeah we got about i would say we have about three or four inches of snow uh it's kind of wet so it has that beautiful cotton candy hanging in the trees thing going it's really quite something uh, so it's a nice day for all that. Let me play with my camera here a little bit. So we can get a little better. Yeah, so it's it's nice. I hope uh, taking a break from the Parish Guide article. Very good. Oh, that's another thing on my list. Oh, oh. Good. I'm glad you're. I'm glad you're telling the story though. Uh, if you if folks don't know, Deb is our missions chair here at FCC and she has done such an amazing job she's uh, uh, and uh, I know you're writing up your article now and um, you know the the impact that you've had and in harnessing the church's ability to express its desire to help the world and the impact that you've had in being able to uh, to organize and um, hold all these things together has just been amazing so uh, you have touched I know countless lives. I mean, think about that coat sorting that we did. And I, I got a nice note this week from another uh, from another pastor up the street that was kind of got delivered some coats. And it's like, hey, did you guys those come from you guys? Like, well, they came from the United Way, but um, but the but but that was an encouragement to him in his ministry of what he's doing. Uh, and and so, you know, the the number of of lives and goodness that you've and and so many people on the on here are, have been a part of that like vicky i know and so many others uh audrey um you know and, and that's just one example of the countless lives you've touched over this last year so anyway that's my little public way of saying thank you deb you've been such a such a treasure to uh to continue to work with and so uh, so i probably didn't expect to get that this morning but i hope i hope it's appreciated because 
we appreciate all that you're doing. Um, Deb is amazing. That's right. So, morning, Jamie. How are you? Audrey, good morning to you. Hope you're great. John, hello, hello. I don't, do you guys get a lot of snow up there? I'm curious. Uh, um, it's uh, it's kind of melting away here. So, um, Deb, we are uh, – oh, that's more than generous. That is uh, – well, it's just true. So, all right, friends, good morning. It is the – 27th day of January. Can you believe it? I, I'm just, I'm still flabbergasted that next week we're going into February. Uh, but we are the 27th day of January at 11.11, and I'm glad that you're here. Uh, and we'll watch you guys at the plaza. All right. We're, so we're, um, so if I'm feeling distracted today, it's real because, uh, you know, I, I, if you know me, I don't follow a lot of sport bally events or anything like that i don't have a f largely favorite i mean i have favorite teams but you know i i don't it's not my world but there's a few things that you follow and one is there's a sailing race called the vende globe which you've probably heard me talk about but it's ending today uh it is uh, or the the first uh competitors are coming uh, in today now with the and, and you've heard me talk about it before i know but uh, just bear with me. If you if you haven't heard of it, it is a it it starts in Sable de Lone, France, and goes around the world, uh, unassisted, unaided, solo, in a sixty foot Amaka class sailboat, uh, which do uh, which are are insanely fast. So, but so this is ending today, and this is the eightieth day. It's ending on the eightieth day right now. Uh, that that these skippers have not gotten more than a, a an hour or two of sleep at any given one time, that they have been in this carbon fiber world uh, surrounded by water, trying with nothing else to, to survive and to make their boats go fast. Of the 33 boats that started the Vendée Globe, only 25 are still in it. Uh, and it is a true contest in my in my estimation it is not you know millionaires in spandex running around you know slapping each other's butts about how good they did with some sport bally pig thing it is legitimately an extension of what human humans are possible and capable of in this world and i love this and I, i've been following it for the last 80 days, and this today is the culmination of, and and so I printed off this notion of where, uh, where the where the the boats that are coming in. Now understand, remember, this, and this is unprecedented in this race. I know I'm going to talk about this race a lot today, but you're stuck with it. So you know, I, if if you have something else to do, but but we're going to get to the point of where where I'm going and what what I think this has to offer us. So I printed off the tracking map for you because I wanted you to see this that that. Uh, those little, these little guys. This is uh, the guy in yellow in the front is Charlie Delong, which is one of the great offshore sailors of the world. Uh, there's down down at the bottom there in the Bay of Biscay is uh, is Boris Herman, uh, the only uh, contending non Frenchman in the race. Uh, it's it uh, and they have been through the ringer and they have been through uh, everything. But right now they are little pips on the screen but so let me see if i can give you a better estimation of what's going on here so here i'm going to offer you maybe if my tech will work All right, it's decided to not play with me. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold this up for you to see. This is what these they actually look like.
Now, of course, they don't have the dramatic music all the time, but... Uh, Now imagine doing that for 80 days straight. All right. Now I just showed you. Now this has a point, trust me. Now I just showed you you know, our little tracking map with this little very polite little bips that that here's Charlie Delon 50 miles outside of Sablo Delon ready to go across the finish line uh, and possibly win, maybe not, because there's other th other things in there. And I, then I would just showed you a video, which gives you a little better idea of what it is. But. We have no idea. You and I, I don't have any idea what it is to be 80 days offshore, unassisted, trying to hold together a boat without getting a, without more than an hour of sleep at any given one time, without uh, with, without with living on, uh, you know, granola and uh, and uh, freeze dried food, trying to keep together a boat that it, that is that the the uh, the world the the ocean is trying to tear apart and all this all the time trying to do weather routing trying to figure out trying to not run into anything not run into anybody else all of it you and i have no idea what that experience is the difference between the experience on the ground of what those sailors are enduring right now and the difference between me offering you that video like you could see oh like that's some like that's some something like those things are moving and there's and you could see the spray and see the or offering you this little map of what's going on out there and whoops, whoops, in the world and that Charlie Dallin's just 50 miles outside of Sable Delon and and that uh, and this year there would normally be a million people there ready to greet him this so this race only happens every once every four years I, and because it takes so that long to get a campaign up and going and uh, to turn it around that and this and this year because of the restrictions in France that there will be very few people at the finish line but normally there is over a million people that comes to this town and presses themselves against the water and watches and gets on board boats and rides along with the uh, with the, the winners as they're coming in they've been 26,000 miles and it's just and at, at minutes separating them that's how incredible these sailors are. You and I have no idea what that experience is. I don't care how much sailing you've done. Like the, there are, there are under two hundred people on the planet that have ever done this. Two hundred people on the planet that have ever completed a Vendée Globe. We don't know what that experience is. We can look at the map and we can follow along. We can watch a video and we can. We can kind of think, oh, look at that, and have some sort of vicarious experience through it. But the reality is, we don't know what has been made flesh in that. We don't know, and this is where I want us to go today. And this is what I, and this is what I think is so powerful about, and, and why I want to talk about this race, not just because it's it's on the on the forefront of my mind because I'm excited about it, but also because it's just a great example of this reality of the fact that of what is really real in this world the first chapter of john the 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 best christmas story ever told as far as i'm concerned you know there's a lot of christmas stories out there you know you get you get the ones with the shepherds and you get the ones with the with all the things but this i think is actually the best christmas story ever told this this beginning of first John in the beginning was the word and the word or the beginning of the gospel of John in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God he was with God in the beginning through him all things were made and without him nothing was made that has been made in him was life and that life was the light of all mankind 
The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He only came as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born of natural descent, nor not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, friends, that's a Christmas story. That's a present wrapped up with a big bow. And what that truly is, is the really real. It is the sign and seal of what really is. One of the great challenges of this time is that we have been transfixed by that which is not real. By, and I'm not saying they're necessary lies, I'm not saying it's lies. I'm saying it's, it, but we're, we're not in the business of receiving what is real in our daily life. We're in the business of receiving what this political commentary has to say. We're in the business of receiving what this uh, epidemiologist has to say. We're in the business of, of, of receiving what this government official has to say. We're in the business of, of receiving all kinds of things which are not the, the life and truth and the flesh and the and the word made flesh that hear those words that the word made flesh the really real lived out into the world we can look at our maps we can watch our videos we can inconvenience all of the electrons that are giving us all of these ideas about what's going on in the world and they're all untrue because they are not the really real. That which is happening on the deck of our ship right here and right now. They are not the spray that's hitting us in the face. They are not us trying to navigate our little boat. They are not, uh, they are not the, us running the true race of that which matters towards the destination of what truly is and what matters in it. The great thing I love about the Vendée Globe race, is that it cuts through every idea of what you think, like it, that, that is really real. And just the glimpses you get of what these, of what these skippers contend with remind me of the fact that there's this whole bunch of nonsense out there. And when I say nonsense, remember, I've defined that term before, that it is stuff that, that literally takes away the, the, the meaning making. It takes away that which gives sense to the world. We're still that and that and there are people out there and there are people in your lives that are trying really hard to contend with what is not, uh, not real in your life. That is not of the fle- of, from the word made flesh. You're a child of God. That's the great opening line of the Gospel of John. Is that you are a child born not of natural descent, born not of human decision, not of a husband's will, but born of God. You are born of the really real. You are born of eternal stuff. You know, in the, in the church right now, we're doing a series, if you're following it, we're doing a series of the virtues. Because the virtues point towards the really real. You, you know, this Sunday we're coming up to do fortitude. You can't step on board of an amaka 
class 60 sailboat and set out for 80 to 100 days around the world in some of the worst conditions ever if you don't contain some fortitude. And that you don't live that out in your flesh and bones when your fingers are cracked and your and and your uh, your your skin is peeling and your and your mind is fogged with emotion and sleeplessness. The living out of the really real on is it there is an example to us of our living out of the really real, living out of the eternal things. We talk about the virtues because they're eternal things. All of this gobbledygook that comes across your screens, that comes across some talking head from the media, that comes across some expert out there on the future. By the way, there are no experts on the future, friends. There are no experts on the future. Anybody who says they can predict the future, the moment they say that is a lie. If they're giving you, if they're selling you something, it's a lie, not because they're wrong. Maybe they'll be right. It's a lie because they don't know, and it's not really real. It may be a great piece of speculation, and they might get it right that time, but they do not know. It is not word made flesh. Do you, do you see where I'm going with this? Are you, are you with me? I, it's so important for us to get this these days. It's so important for us to stand on the deck of our own boat and sail our own ship with the really real in the conditions in which we're in, with the wind which we have to contend with, with the, with the waves as it is in our lives, and sail that thing with the data that we have right here and right now, not with all of the imagined things that may come one day, somehow, somewhere out there, by some expert that's telling us, no, actually your weather is this way. No, actually your wave state is this way. No, actually, your sales are doing this. Anybody who's in the business of telling you your life is other than the way it actually is in your life, be wary, friends. Be wary. The Apostle Paul was a great sailor. Like he went, he sailed all over the Mediterranean. Uh, he he uh, he was a passenger most often, but uh, but he taught. He uses a lot of sailing metaphors and. One of my favorite is that he talks about using the anchor, uh, the anchor of hope. You know, if you go across the, the you know the the great bridge over in over in Bristol, like there's the Hope Bridge, um, the great big anchor on it. Why? Because it is the symbol of those Paul's words of the anchor being a hope. But it, but if you remember, and we talked about this a long time ago, but. But the, the hope is not just like this anchor that you put down and you're like, okay, now we can sit here. But it is a, he talks about it as a kedge, which means you, you take it out and you set it down in the water. And then you, on your boat, pull towards it. And in pulling towards it, you bring yourself out of these positions where you might be pinned against the ground. And I would say our hope dwells not in the future. It, our hope dwells not in what might come to pass. Our hope dwells that not in the, oh, well, one day this will be over. Our hope, friends, is a real thing that dwells right here and right now. Our hope is in the Word made flesh. Our hope is in the really real. And that the really real of your life is the thing that can that, that can be used as a kedge when you're feeling pinned against the rocks of your life, when you're feeling in the shoals, when you're feeling like you, you, you don't have another tack in you to be able to, to, to make another change or decision. The great writer Patrick O'Brien used to say, you, he'd get, he was, he's notorious for getting writer's block. Now, for a guy as prolific as Patrick O'Brien, uh, that's saying something. He was known for getting writer's block. He says, I never met a writer's block that a good meal, a long walk, a nice pipe, and a good night's sleep couldn't solve. What well, Patrick O'Brien had figured out in the course of his fighting the resistance of his writer's block was that when he anchored himself in the really real, when he anchored himself right in the place that he was, I mean, he could pull on that to open up new paths, new courses, new tacks 
new ways to be, new points of navigation to come into the place that, that God was calling him to. I'm fired up about the race, so if I'm fired up today, it may have something to do with that. But I am, I, I can't tell you how I hope that, that this, this resonates with you. This resonates. Because to me, I think that one of the great challenges of our whole world in these days is that, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we didn't recognize Him. And it's not because we're rejecting. Like, this is the thing. It's not about rejecting. Like, we're in the business of rejecting Jesus, and we're, or we're in the business of rejecting the really real where we find it. No, I don't think that's the case at all. I think, actually, most of us are trying really hard to be as faithful as we know how to be and, 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 and to be as healthy as we know how to be. But there are so many signals. There are so many chittering chatterboxes. There are so many monkeys in the trees. There is so much jibber-jabber. There is so much uh, despair merchants that are out there selling you another way to feel bad or afraid about yourself or your life. And none of them, friends, not one of them are the word made flesh anchored in the really real right now, right here. None of them are on the deck of your boat, running your race, contending with your weather, contending with your sea state. They don't know. They might have a fancy graphic. They might even have a, 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 a fancy video to convince you this is the way, this is what it's really like. But you know what it's really like. You know what your life entails. You know, you know in your heart of hearts that which is really real. And what it is that God in heaven is calling you towards. What port, what course, what star you are being called to follow. You know. And that even if you don't, even if that's not intuitively obvious, you have within you and you have about you the really real. You have about you the, the very thing, the, the very reality itself to use as a kedge of hope to get yourself off whatever shore you might find yourself pinned against. All right, friends, happy Vende Globe Day for you. Uh, it is my uh, that uh, it's my hope and that uh, that you will find yourself uh, anchored in the really real these days, anchored in real knowing, anchored in what you really know versus what some graphic or some video or some talking head might tell you. Anchor, stay anchored in the in the word made flesh. And from that place. You will win the race. All right, friends, that's my uh, that's my hope for you today. Uh, we will be back tomorrow with another 11:11. I am so glad that you're all with us here, and uh, I can't thank you enough. Uh, peace and grace to you all. <laughs>